challenge, it'll be easier to use a workspace that provides easy access to the stroke and brush options. So let's head on up to the workspace options and select Essentials Classic. All right, now that we're all set, let's pan on up to level one. First, take note that this mastery challenge requires you to match the bottom line to the look of the top line. So for each level, you'll want to use the black arrow, keyboard shortcut V, to select the bottom paths and change them to match the top paths. Okay, level one revisits the stroke weight. You can change the weight or thickness of a stroke right here at the top or here in the properties panel. So select the path and crank it on up. All right, sliding up to level two, the core concept of stroke and fill also returns, just to make sure you got it. Select the path and remove the fill with the forward slash keyboard shortcut and change the stroke color either up here or over here in the properties panel. And just when you thought it was all review, level three comes with a dotted line. Okay, so there are a ton of stroke options to reveal by clicking the stroke menu right here. We can round caps or corners, we can create dashed lines, but dotted lines are a bit tricky. First, let's make the end cap rounded. Next, let's apply dashed lines. So here's the deal. To make a dotted line, we need to make the gaps bigger and the dash have no width at all so that we get round caps on either side of a zero width dash, making them dots for a dotted line. All right, on to level four and arrowheads. So the arrowhead options are right here in the stroke panel as well. And there are a ton of arrowheads and tails to choose from. The one tricky part is that the arrowhead size is tied to the stroke weight. So you'll want to change the size of the arrowhead or tail by way of percentage right here. All right, level five introduces width profiles. These can help your lines feel hand-drawn and much more energetic. By default, you have a bunch of useful width profiles to choose from, including the thin, wide, thin profile right here. But what if you have need of a custom width profile? Level six to the rescue. Conquering level six requires you to use a new tool, the width profile tool, keyboard shortcut, shift W. You can use this tool to change the width profile anywhere you want. And if you want to reuse this custom profile later, you can find the Save Profile button right here at the bottom of the Width Profile menu. Level 7 introduces brushes in Illustrator. There are actually five different types of brushes, and each has its own unique options. And there's even a brush library with tons of content to explore. But to get started with brushes, let's apply an art brush from the brush menu right here at the top and take a look at a few brush workflows. First, if I change the weight or the color of a brush, notice that it is still affected. Second, if I double click on a brush, notice how this reveals some useful advanced options. And lastly, if I decide I need to go back to a normal path, I just need to click on this icon right here at the bottom of the brushes menu. Level eight reveals another type of useful brush, a pattern brush. There are a ton of pattern brushes in your brush library and you can make your own, but let's try out our first pattern brush by selecting the train tracks from the brush menu and turning the stroke weight up to six. All right, but once in a while, you're gonna need to customize a brush. Level nine starts out the same. You select the path, you choose the train tracks brush and you turn it up to six. But then you'll need to expand the brush. To do this, you want to head on up to the object menu and select expand appearance. Notice how we see all the vector paths, not just the singular line down the middle. To select and delete the planks that we want to remove, it might be tempting to use this black arrow, but expanded paths are grouped, so instead, you'll want to press A to get the white arrow and use it to select individual paths within the group to change them or delete them. 
And now you can customize any brush. All right, level 10 introduces scatter brushes with a twist. To turn this path into paw prints, just press V for the black arrow again and select the path and then go to the brushes menu and select the paw prints. And here's the twist. To change the direction of the path, go to object, path, reverse, path, direction. And at last, you are ready to take on the final challenge, level 11. Okay, select the doors with the black arrow and press command three to hide them. And oh buddy, this looks hard, but it's really not. Let's start out by zooming way in for this one. Then use the black arrow to select the path. Then go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. And notice that the vector path now runs around the outside of the stroke instead of down the middle. And if we click this icon right here, or press Shift X to swap the fill and stroke, Aha! Uh -huh. We can now make a stroke around the outside of what used to be a line. All right, halfway there. Now, to make another path that is equidistant but bigger than this path, go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And there it is. You've mastered all 11 stroke 